This tutorial will walk you through how to terminate an employee, then create, and then submit an ROE to Service Canada. Note, if you wish for WagePoint to submit your ROE to Service Canada, you must have a signed ROE SAT registration addendum on file before beginning this create ROE workflow. I will show you where to double check that this step is done. All right, so we're gonna head all the way over to the right under more and click ROE SAT. Down here in the bottom left, you'll see the green verified check mark saying document signed and it's date stamped. This is where you confirm that your ROE SAT registration addendum is on file and confirmed. If you do not have this and you wish for WagePoint to submit your record of employment for you, then you must go back and read the knowledge base article and follow the instructions on how to complete that step. Okay, so let's begin. An important question to ask yourself before starting is, did you run an off-cycle payroll? There's two reasons. If the off-cycle payroll falls between regular payrolls, the hours and amounts of that off-cycle payroll will be added to the pay period in the regular cycle date. But if the last payroll is an off-cycle payroll, the hours, amounts, and cycle end date for the off-cycle payroll will be reported in pay period one in block 15. So let's head back to our company information tab. This is an important step because we need to ensure that all of this information is accurate and up to date. The information tab is used to pre-populate the employer information fields on the record of employment. All fields will be transferred over to the new ROE, except the contact information that you entered in the ROE SAT registration addendum, which will be included in box 16 of the record of employment. Any changes that you make now to this comp company information will not be reflected retroactively on any ROEs that are currently in progress or already completed. Okay, let's scroll up here to the orange tab or orange bar on the top and click employees. We will scroll down to the employee we wish to terminate. So we're gonna use demo three for today's presentation. Under the edit bar here, we're gonna click terminate employment. Please make note of this message at the top of the screen before you change this employee's status. Ensure that you have paid the employee all outstanding wages and only change the employment status after finalizing payroll. This is a very, very critical step. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Change, let's work, we'll move on to complete this module. We are going to select the last day works. So I know this happens to be June 25th. And we have two toggle options here. Disable access means disable the employee's access to the employee portal. Once the termination is complete, you can have the ability to toggle that on, yes or no. You can also decide whether this employee will be eligible for rehire or not. And again, you must acknowledge that you have paid the employee all wages, commissions, vacation pay, et cetera, before you proceed. You can also hit cancel and exit the termination process here. We're gonna hit submit. You will receive a notice here saying the employment status has changed. So we're going to select a reason for this, shortage of work. And then we must select the first day worked. Now this is automatically going to populate with the hire or rehire date for this employee. The last day worked will be pre-populated based on the information provided in the termination workflow in the previous step. We just put that information in. You can change this in both the fields if required. You cannot create an ROE for a date range that has already been reported on a previous ROE, manual or automatic, automatic. And remember, the employee takes all responsibility for accuracy and changes to any pre-populated data within the ROE. Now we have the ability to select, I'll finish this later, or we can resume back to creating the ROE. Here we go. 
Now we get a visual copy of the record of employment. So please take a little scroll down and review everything for accuracy. Now, if you require any, any edits to the document at this stage, there is a little edit button right here. So I will have a separate knowledge base article and tutorial on steps within the edit process. But from the screen on, we're gonna hit Submit to Service Canada. The on-screen message confirms that the submission went to Service Canada or it's on its way. <laughs> and you will also receive an email from WagePoint notifying you if Service Canada has processed your file successfully. You will also be notified if there are any issues with the submission that you will need to amend and resubmit. Thank you and have a great day.